Okay. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Kieran and this is the best of the web, finally, after a very long break. So starting off with a video clip of something that you're not very likely to see every single day of your life, here is a video of some drag queens who were on-duty firemen putting out the truck fire blaze. That is awesome. And seeing as there's pretty much nothing to add to something as awesome as that, yeah, let's just turn my head a little bit more until I finish my sentence. Let's just move on. So you know that feeling you get the day after you've been drunk and you can't quite remember if there's anything you've done that was very embarrassing and then it suddenly comes into your head and you have this hot flush of just shame and misery that sweeps over you? Oh, am I the only one who gets that on a regular basis? Anyway, um, some people who might be having that feeling right about now are the awarding body at a recent ceremony for a Kazakhstani athlete, and this woman is standing on the podium with her gold medal, about to look at her flag and hear her national anthem, and then they put the song on. And it turns out to be actually instead the Borat version of the Kazakhstani national anthem. And I love the look on the woman's face as she's sort of like, is this my national anthem? No one else seems to be really responding. This must be my national anthem. Why have I never listened to my national anthem before? Man, you need to lay off the pina coladas. But anyway, I didn't realise quite how ghetto the people who operate the sound controls at these ceremonies are. It's just some guy in the operating room with his MacBook on YouTube trying to find a national anthem for people. A uh, Kazakhstani national anthem. Oh, a slightly Middle Eastern looking dude and some stereotypical Middle Eastern music. It must be Kazakhstan. I'm not gonna lie, I still don't really know where Kazakhstan is. I remember looking at it on a map and thinking it was very big and it's being somewhere between Russia and the Middle East, I think. So... If that is a testament to English education, then take it as you will. But anyway, I don't know if you've ever been told by your parents that when you go for a task that you want to do and you challenge yourself, you should 100% commit to that challenge. And Bola Abadesi, a 52-year-old Nigerian woman, has taken this meaning to the absolute furthest extent as she tried to smuggle heroin into the United States. But instead of being one of those mainstream average drug smugglers who brings like a pound in at a time, she swallowed 180 pellets of heroin, adding up to five pounds in her stomach, which is the approximate weight of a slightly premature baby. Surprise, surprise, the woman was caught when a routine pat down found that her stomach was unusually hard which meant that either A, she'd been doing about a thousand sit-ups a night, or B, she was smuggling so many drugs in her stomach that it had literally expanded to its maximum capacity. The drugs are estimated to be worth about 150,000 US dollars, which is about a tenth of the amount of the money you'd have to pay me to go through the ordeal of shitting out five pounds of heroin. So anyway, children, our final story has to do with the internet finding itself in another case of English teacher syndrome. What is English teacher syndrome, you ask? Is a little phrase I like to use to describe it when someone finds meaning or a sign in something which has absolutely no meaning or signs in it at all. Such as when an author writes that the sea is blue, an English teacher might take it to mean that the sea has untold perils of sailors and the emotion and raw pain that they have suffered has seeped into the sea and made it this depressing ocean of blueness that is a cosmic void that when we look at it is like a mirror of our own lives. Whereas the author really meant that the sea was the color blue. Anyway, as anyone in England knows, Talisa, one of the singers from our favourite Greek slash London grime group, N-Dubs, has recently had a sex tape released. And now the X Factor judge has been accused of releasing the sex tape only four days before her first single, entitled Young, comes out, and it therefore being a publicity stunt. Now, it's not actually this that I have an objection to. It's more the fact that people think that the first line, which says, forgive me for what I have done, is some sort of signal from Talisa herself saying something about the sex tape. And I just have to ask, do you really think that she is this insanely ballsy to actually open her song with some sort of confession about the sex tape she's released? I wouldn't put it past her to release a sex tape as a publicity stunt, but the one thing that she's gonna be trying to avoid is making people think that it was a publicity stunt to release the sex tape. Because if she really didn't care about that, then all that would make her was a very overachieving porn star. 
All I'm saying that is if you're going to go after someone with the mob mentality with your pitchforks and torches, make sure it really is the paedophile that you go after, not the paediatrician. Anyway, that is all for today, guys. If you liked the video, please do give it a thumbs up. And if you want to go check out the video I made yesterday on my other channel, The English Blokey, then there will be a link in the sidebar, Dizzle. It's not actually a sidebar anymore. It's the underbar, isn't it? And also, if you do not follow me on Twitter already, then do that as well. There'll be another link for that. Um, I will be making videos on this channel from every Saturday from now on, which is going to happen, I promise you. So I was trying to burp for so long then. And there will be new videos on the English Bokeh channel every Sunday from now on. Yeah, that's two videos a week. Oh, I'm amazing. Oh, I'm such a great person. So sorry for the little break I took and thanks for the people who stuck around. I will see you next Saturday, but until then, that is me.